Welcome to day 1601 of What You Up To Now. Sharon horn from here. Our idiom and expression for supersize your business today was spitting image. And our topic for the BU 365 Day Challenge to do one thing every day that improves us was life is a mirror. So we talked about life being a reflection of the things around you, your experiences. And I think we talked about this a few days ago. Every experience we have is for a reason. It doesn't always feel like it at the at the time, especially if we find ourselves in a bad situation, we're having a bad experience, or if we're, we're frightened or afraid or anything negative is happening. It doesn't feel like we're in the right place for us, but events, choices, decisions, led us up to that situation. And there's something that we need to learn from. Maybe it's that we made some bad decisions leading up to a situation we find ourselves involved in. Um, have you ever been involved in a relationship and you're just shaking your head and like, why am I friends with this person? Or why am I involved romantically with this person? We have very little in common. What the heck's going on? I'm miserable more than I'm feeling good. What am I going to do about it? And so sometimes life is just showing us what we need to know and learn from person, place, thing, experience in order to personally develop and move forward in our life to become the better version of ourselves, the person that we're here to be, here on the planet to be. So uh, spitting image, of course, is a, one of those idioms and expressions that's been around for a long time. For the month of June, to coincide with the annual challenge, I'm doing a relationship-related idiom uh, for the Super Side Your Business, mostly for me, female entrepreneurs and business owners group. And spitting image was the the topic today and it's been around since 1689 George Farquhar uh, was a playwright who used it in his play love and the bottle I'm not familiar with that work because it's from 1689 but uh, he talked about uh, and used this expression spitting image meaning somebody resembles somebody else so much or something else that it looks like they were spit out of a person's mouth so that could be your sibling or a parent, etc. And I use these little ducky ducks because they look just like each other. They're the spitting image. They could be twins, but uh, so for my granddaughter's, one of my granddaughter's first birthday parties, but we never use them. They're little, little tea light candles. And partly we didn't use them because the eyes are funky on all of them, right? They, they got messed up. They, the, obviously the print on the wax wasn't the best option. And so it came off. So all the little eyes are wonky and different and Tried to cover them, color them in with the magic marker, but it still didn't work. So we didn't use them. We had lots of other things going on anyway, and we had really cute birthday candles. So spitting image and life is a mirror. I, I shared the mirror exercise in the annual challenge today, and it's one I learned from Louise Hay, geez, a couple of decades ago. And uh, it's where you look in the mirror and you tell yourself you love yourself and you look in the mirror for at least, I think she started out at 30 seconds, but I always say a minute, spend a minute looking at yourself in the mirror, staring at yourself in your eyes and saying in whatever phrasing works for you, I love you. I love myself. I unconditionally love myself right now. I love you right now. Whatever works for you, pick a phrase that feels right for you. And sometimes it's not going to feel right when you first start doing it, right? I remember when I first did the mirror exercise, I burst into tears because I didn't back then treat myself like I loved myself very often. And so it was really hard to look in the mirror, especially hard to look in my own eyes and tell myself I love myself. It's a very, if you've never done it, it's a lot more challenging exercise than you would imagine that it is because and like my dad's favorite poem the the man in the mirror the the man in the looking glass the face in the mirror I can't remember what it's called but he had a poem that basically says how you live your life it it really doesn't matter as much to other people as it matters to you and the man in the mirror the face in the mirror when you look in the mirror at the end of the day and you have to live with yourself because even if other people don't know what you do you always know what you do and whether it's right for you or not, whether it feels right for you or not, you're the one that has to look in the mirror at the end of the day or look at your face when you're brushing your teeth at the end of the day and know if you've, if you've lived your life in a way that's consistent with what's important to you, with your core values and beliefs, etc. So those are our pieces of content for today. Sunday is my, my, one of my favorite days of the week because it's a family day. It's a fun day. It's a relaxing, recharging my batteries day. And it's also my planning for the week ahead. And so we've got some exciting, fun projects coming up this week. 
I don't think I personally am participating in any trainings this week. Last week we had I had three different things that I was involved in, and I actually missed one because I was working with clients, and I feel really bad because it was it was the one I wanted to do the most last week. So we'll see if I can catch up on that or or get access to that information in another way. Haven't found out yet. I'll have to direct message the person and say, okay, my bad, wrong time in my mind, had a client, da 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 da. So. If I can help you in any way, I this is my segment every day where I journal. It's really my my online journaling, what I'm working on, what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar and corporate business world to the online world in 2017. 2017, following my divorce and divestiture of all of our joint assets, I had an opportunity to figure out well, what is it that I want to do with my life. I was, you know, not quite done yet and old enough to retire. I still had enough energy that I was curious about the online world because I'd always been curious about it. So I thought I would pop on and see what I could see, learn what I could learn and do what I wanted to do on it. And for the first few years, I, I was myself pajama grandma and I did a lot of everything in my pajamas because I could. And prior to that, I was never able to do that because I was out in corporate America or I was out running my own physical businesses. And I don't know any businesses short of a couple that I wouldn't participate in where I could show up in my pajamas. So uh, the whole life top, le life top, laptop lifestyle uh, really appealed to me. And the whole being able to do what I want, when I want, where I want, with whomever I want, wearing what I want kind of became my motto. And then I realized in the pandemic in 2020, when we were really not doing much or going anywhere, that that wasn't what I wanted for myself and for the rest of the world. I, I want it to be an option if we so choose to live that way, but I didn't want it to be mandatory or mandated. So uh, I kind of let Pajama Grandma fall by the wayside and we hopped on and started doing the Get Up and Go Challenge. And so for 2020 and 2021, we every other month we did what I called the Get Up and Go Challenge. And we uh, I taught something called a SOAP framework, which is a strategy, a simple four-step process for dealing with any change, any challenge, any obstacle, any roadblock, any problem, anything that comes up in your life that is a challenge or that you didn't expect. And we take that framework and we install it in our subconscious through repetition so that we automatically use it. It automatically applies to any of those situations that come up in our life and guarantees we have better results as a result of having that in our subconscious, that process in our process, in our subconscious, that framework than if we didn't have it. And so I taught that for 10 times. And then this year, as part of the annual challenge, I decided I would just incorporate it once a month. We're covering it uh, as part of the annual challenge. So we're doing it 12 times this year uh, instead of 10 in the last two years. Not that that matters, but we're applying it to each of the different areas of the life framework that I've used for decades to manage and, and set goals and objectives and, and kind of frame my life. And I learned that from Tony Robbins and I want to say the late eighties that, and he had a seven step framework, which was physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships and contribution. And then in 2021 April, I got involved with the coaching group and I added Confidence and communication. So now I have a nine step process because I added confidence and communication. So I set goals and objectives, at least for last year and this year. And we'll see next year. I'm not sure if I'll keep confidence and communication. Probably because they're sort of foundational skills. We need to be able to communicate with ourselves and with other people in order to create what we want in our life. And we need to have the confidence to take action on the things that we want for our life. And so I think that those are really foundational and they, they absolutely positively like all the areas and aspects of our life interact with one another. So if I can help you anyway, please just ask with respect to business, growing your business, especially uh, either offline or online. If you've got a question, if you're stuck on something and you just don't feel like, okay, I don't know who to ask about this. I've been plugging around looking for answers, but I can't quite figure out what the answers to this question or my next step should be please ask. Don't ever stay stuck. I remember uh, when I first left corporate America and I didn't have my awesome teams around me and I hadn't created those for the business that I was focusing on yet. 
how alone and how hard it felt to find answers. It was before the internet. So you couldn't just go on Google or Yahoo or Bing or Quora or whoever exists nowadays. You couldn't just go look it up and try to get an answer. You had to literally find human beings or someone that you could ask to get an answer. And I think that's starting to become a lost art. And I think that we need to remember that our businesses, even if they're a hundred percent online, they always involve relationships and people, which is why this month is such a great month for focusing on the relationship area and aspect of our life. All right. Questions asked. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Have an awesome day.